Thanking you for another Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you for the sheep and the lambs. Thank you for what you're doing for us and what you're going to do. You brought us from a mighty long way. Thank you for teachers meeting tonight. Thank you for your holy word and example of David, King Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing for us right now when we were crippled and helpless. You invited us to your table. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you did, as David did, Jonathan's son. Thank you, Master. Oh, God, we, we owe you. We're in debt. We are indebted to you. We pray as we go forward that you will guide our minds and our hearts. Those who are live streaming, bless them. Lord, strengthen them. Those who are sick, touch their bodies. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. For his name's sake, guide my thoughts, guide my mind. You get the glory. Psalm 22 and 3 says, O thou who inhabitest the praises of Israel, your church. We're here to praise your name. Yes, we are. You've been better to us than we've been unto ourselves. Yes, you brought us from a mighty long oh, way. Yes. Put food on our tables. Healed our bodies. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Yes, you oh, you guided us through this day today. Yes. Through the unseen and seen yes, dangers. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. And for his name's sake, and they all said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This song, I mean, pardon me, this letter, pastoral letter to uh, Timothy mm -hmm. yes. is unique within itself. Paul here uh, starts off by saying who he was. He gives his introduction about his uh, authority as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to greet in this letter Timothy, it says grace and mercy be unto you, peace. And what's so strikingly touching that he does not do this with Titus, Obadiah, right. uh, well, not Obadiah, but Philemon, Philemon and others. He says to Timothy, yes. my dearly beloved son, that is so uh, heartwarming. Right. He is showing him that he really cares about his state yes. Yes. as a pastor and as an individual right. yes. by saying, my dearly beloved. Pastor Anderson, uh, Dr. Anderson, he said, he called me one time, Timothy. <laughs> because he saw the needs of being encouraged, which Paul here through this first uh, uh, chapter gives credence to his stability, 
you know, you got to have an understanding of where you come from. Right. You, you always be questioning, yes. well, you know, why am I here? What? Right. But when you have roots, yes. I'm not talking about what the man wrote years ago, and yet roots are important. Right. He starts off uh, by giving him an understanding about his roots by him laying on hands. Now you got the gift. I know, I know you cried for me when I you you were crying. He said it in there. Your tears, you cried for me. But I you know my joy just to see you, just just to embrace, you know, just to just to have you there. Just love you, Timothy. But but you got to do this now. You 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 can't you can't be uh, a weakling. You can't be a, a, a fearful person. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. But what? Power. Love. And a sound mind. That's what he gave us now. For you to do your work. He said, yeah, I, I get to joy because I see you. You're you tall and you're working. You, and and uh, Paul is talking from experience of how uh, this is a warfare we in. Yeah. Yeah. And he gives this young man, this pastor, this is a pastoral letter Amen. Yeah. where he sets the tone, where his growth, where his grandmother yeah. and his mother uh, they, they had that faith that you couldn't shake. Mm -hmm. Now, don't you come up here, Timothy, with shaky faith. Mm -hmm. and, and he was so, uh, his words were so mellow, yes. but sound. Right. Sound doctrine. Yes. It was mellow. He gets over there where he tells him to preach the word be instant in season. Now, you do this now. You, you both save yourself. But, the, but right now, he's dealing with putting this in order, putting, keeping him founded and stable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, when you know, I, I, I thank God for Dr. Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. When I went to theological seminary school, as they were giving the introduction, they said, many, some have come here thinking they were converted. Uh -huh. And when they left, they were unconverted. Mm -hmm. Some have come here unconverted and got converted. All right. All right. But when I went to theological seminary school, I was grounded That's right. because I was yeah. taught Amen. Right. Right. and I was cultivated by the late Dr. Carl yes, yes, right. Jadis. Yes. See, many of these young ministers want to go out and pass the people that have been uh, in the church for 40 and 50 years and they don't know how to do it because they have not sat under a season man and want to see somebody shout. Talking about I slave them in the street. You haven't done nothing. Slave them in the spirit. What is that? That's that's worldly stuff. Yeah. Bringing it to the church from the no 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 no. We don't. Paul and the elders, and the the pastors, uh, seasoned pastors, uh, taught the young men how to carry themselves. Yeah. This is what this is what Paul is doing now. Right. Yeah. He's teaching Timothy. First of all, his roots, where he can feel positive about his ministry. That's right. That's right. I went to seminary school. I, I graduated from there, from Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. I got my doctor's degree from uh, Northland International University in Trinity. Uh, Trinity Theological Seminary. But 
those were just tools to work with. I had to have some foundation. I had to, I had to know Christ for myself. I had to know what God had given me. What I had, what he had given me. So this is what, this is what is going on now with uh, Timothy that Paul is explaining and expressing that you have the gift, use it. You can't, you can't grow it unless you use it, Timothy. You got to get busy. Now let's, let's trickle on down here. Some have gifts to sing, but they don't do it. Some have a smile to give, but they don't give it. Don't you know those, those are gifts that God give you to use for his glory, not for your glory. Because once we die, the gift goes back to him anyway. Don't you know the gift of whatever you, prayer or faith or those are gifts where God want you to uh, to cultivate, yes. use it. Right, right. He gave me, he called me to preach. Yes. And then he chose me to preach Jesus. Yes. Then I got busy after the man of God. I said, Ram, yes. have you ever seen my call? He said, mm-hmm. We was driving to Vallejo in that, that first Chanute. Back in 1970, we was going to pay some, a bill over there. And I said, Rev, you have seen my car? He said, mm hmm. He said, You got to study more. In other words, you got to cultivate what God gave you. You got to stick your head in them books. You got to go to school. You got to. And many of the young men don't want to do that. It's just like our young people now. I, I was talking with the bus driver today. We had a beautiful conversation. Uh, this new bus driver, he said, I said, you know what? I taught school for 35 years, a little more. And I saw these young people and in their 35s and 40s, they didn't, some of them didn't go to, didn't go to class, they didn't uh, uh, do what, they didn't apply themselves like they spoke, but yet they want a managerial position. They want a position that they're unqualified for. That's the same way it is with them. Some of these young ministers now, they want a pastor unqualified. Instead of humbling themselves and saying, look, I need help. Go sit under a man of God until God move a congregation Amen. Yes. God, if, if a young man, look, God opened this door for me here. Right. Right. Rev said, don't go out. No, let, let them call you. Yes. God opened this door here. Right. Yes, did. All evidence point to that. Amen. Right. Right. Oh, come on, church. Right. Some of you looking at me like you, you're in space somewhere. You're here. Why are you here? Because God put you here for me to pass to you. I didn't tell when I said to the church when they when the membership elected Pastor Payton. I said, Well, church, I've done what I was supposed to do. And so I say I, I, I didn't say I'm. I said I'm, I've done. What, that's, that's the words I said. I've done what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And I, Sister Scott and I, got up and we was walking out. I didn't ask not a one member to come on. Let's go. Not a one member. Is that right? All that was over there stand when you that came that, that followed. Sister Jules, sister, yes. they're all in the back there. So. Not, I didn't ask you all not to follow me. Did I ask you, come on, let's go? Not a member. That's right. Didn't say one word. 
Who oh. was no, you, you got up with you was a stunt, y'all walked. And we got up <coughs> and walked yeah. behind. Right. We didn't go up in front of you, we walked behind. Yes, you yes. Behind. But you didn't ask us. No. 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 Yeah. It's not, well, I just I, that's the point I wanted to prove. I'm not gonna go any further on that. <laughs> but I'm trying to say, God set this church up. But I was taught for 30 some years. I sat, you may be seated. I sat under the late Dr. Carl Anderson from 69 up till 2000. Some told me, you, you're not going to be no, you're not going to be nothing. You just sitting there. What preacher? I, we just had a meeting. And uh, it was uh, the church is on right off of MacArthur. We were sitting back there, it's been about 30 years ago. We were sitting, I was sitting next to this minister in the back. He said, What church you belong to? I said, Who are you? That's huh? Reverend Scott. What, what church you belong to? I said, uh, I'm my pastor's Reverend Dr. Anderson. Call Anderson. I said, Dr. Anderson, yes. He said, you, you better get on out of there and find you, go preach. You know what I did? I turned my back on that Negro. I didn't want to hear that mess. The Lord put me under him to learn. And when I went to theology school, I was grounded. This is what Paul is talking about here. Timothy, you got it, so grow it. That's what I was doing in theology school, preparing myself, growing it. I studied ferociously. And I didn't make no D's and C's either. Straight A's. That was in the uh, uh, Trinity. Straight A's. I would have made straight A's in, in the, uh, that's when my doctorates in theology. Straight A's. Distinguished student. I, I would have made straight A's at uh, Northland, but there was a conflict between a southerner there that he didn't want me to get no A grade. That's all right. I'd rather keep my integrity. As a black man, right. knowing what I know as in my history, right. you can't tell me about where I come. No, no, no. So that you know, it gave me a B, B plus. I, was it B plus or B plus? B plus, yeah. Not, not an A. That was all right. I, I enjoy because I know we know. But anyway, in my last, that was a tough at. Uh, over there where I used to drive from Mill Valley. Ooh, I, I took classes every night after teaching school. I made all A's, all A's. that last semester, all A's. I was on that, on the list anyway. Sister Mary, you have to study as a pastor to show yourself approved. And when I would go home, drive home at night, the late Deacon Burns would talk me home. That was 40 miles. I'd be so sleepy, so tired. I said, Reverend, pull over now if you're too sleepy. Pull over, don't, don't you go sleep behind that wheel. Don't. Pull over. He many, many times he talked me home. When you got the right thing in mind, you know what my prayer was? I, I'm going to tell you all this. You know why I wanted to go to school? You know why I went to Cal? I majored in, I got two BA degrees. You know why I went to uh, San Jose State, got my master's from there? You know why I went to uh, 
school over at Mill Valley. Uh, Theological Seminary over there in Mill Valley. Huh? Go to Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. Yeah. You know why I went there? Do you know why I went to Northland International to get my doctors in ministry and uh, Trinity to get my doctors in theology? You know why? You, do, do, you, do, do you really know why? I'm going to tell you why. I want to be the best for Jesus. Not for my granddaughter, but the best for him. And you know what? He granted me every step of the way. Every step of the way. So that I can teach you. Live before you. Amen. And this is what Paul, if you notice in this letter, said, don't mess, Timothy, don't mess around with those theologies. And, I mean, those philosophers and psychologists and all that. Don't, 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 don't get involved with that. Don't get into arguments. You just preach the word. Be yes to this season, out of season. Grow your, grow your talent. Grow your gift of faith. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'll, I'll, I'll take this up. We got two more. We got two more. Be it the Lord's will. This is, this is awesome. This, this elder pastor this apostle is, is passing down. You can, you can see him now just counseling his son. And he called him my dearly beloved. You know, I, I, I really, I think my friend, I, I don't have too many, I, I don't have too many minister friends. I, I don't have, I don't, I don't go out and do certain things. I'm not saying I'm all that and this. But if you walk in and talk in Jesus, I'm with you. I spend more time with you here and, the, and, and these young people here that, the, that I'm coaching. That's y'all are my family. Besides my wife, she, we at home, we looking at games and talking about what they should have done and all like that. <laughs> then I'm with the with them young people here. But all I do, I just love the Lord. Yeah. Grow in grace. Yeah. And he starts off by saying the grace and mercy and peace. Those are blessings. Yeah. He's blessing this young man. Yeah. A lot of young ministers don't get blessed. They want to get out there. They want to pass. I was like that. I, I wanted. I went over to Second Baptist when I came here, looking for a church to pastor. Now here I just got, just got called. And there's an old deacon there sitting there. <laughs> and old sisters looking at me. I, Sister Alicia, and they looking at me, and, and I, I want to pastor them. In. And the Lord said, mm -mm, son, you're not ready. I called you. I chose you to preach, uh, preach Jesus, but you're not ready yet. You got to send a man to get you ready. And he sent me to uh, 1909 Market Street, where I could le learn some sense. You see, you grow in this business. Amen. And you have to study to show yourself approved. I'm done. I'm done. To those who are live streaming with us, God bless you. Be it the Lord's will. See you. Be it the Lord's will. We should live on Sunday. Get in a church where you have a Bible-based pastor. Amen. 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 You want to be in a 
church where you could be taught and where you'd be yes. spiritually nourished. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, it's more than just running down the aisle right. Right. as a pastor. Right. Sure, I get happy too. Sure. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Spirit of, but then there's a time when I have to teach. Right. Yes. Right. I have time to counsel. Mm -hmm. right. And I can't counsel you if I'm not here. Right. I can't counsel you if I'm right. I'm always gone. Amen. Amen. I take you with me. I take you cross country with me. Amen. 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 Taking you to places where I preached. Amen. Los Angeles, St. Louis. Amen. 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 Well, no, no two or three either. Right. 29 or 30 of us. God bless you. For those who are live stream, God bless you. Be at the Lord's will on Sunday morning. See you. Praying for you. Find you. Hey, I do a swing on the hinges of welcome. You're welcome to come here. Amen. You're most welcome to come here and worship with us. Amen. And if you don't have a church home, I do a swing on the hinges of welcome. Don't, don't believe that lie. You go to church, you get COVID. They getting COVID not going to church. Amen. Amen. The, the football games and bad they jammed with no mask on there. Yeah, and right. yet they say, you come. How come they don't say, you go to the football game, you're going to get COVID? Yeah. Better not say that. <laughs> you better not say that. Don't, just tell the truth. Right. Don't lie. And I'm not saying you go to the game and get COVID. I'm not saying that. No, no. I'm just saying how people go. And, and there's thousands. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. We're